When a female tourist got stranded in a woodland forest in Wyoming, a strange thing happened. A wild horse appeared out of the forest, and what it did shocked both the tourist and the whole world. A professional botanist, Rachel set out to explore the flora life form in a Wyoming forest with her team of scientists and scholars. Whenever they left their hotel, they packed a first aid kit in case of any injuries they might incur on the way. They also held a few pieces of equipment for defense in case of any attack from wild animals. As touring scientists, they knew that going into deep forests could be dangerous, as wild beasts could come out of anywhere. The day Rachel got stranded, she was the one holding the book for recording their plant observation. Her other team members carried the bags, equipment, and emergency food stashes. Only being weighed down by a book and a pen, by 12 p.m., Rachel was the only one on her team still energetic enough to continue their quest. Her other teammates lagged behind while she forged further into the forest. Soon, she could hear them following, but she could not see them. Rachel started to feel frustrated by the delay her team was causing. She kept locating specimens and putting them down on her record, and she always had to call for the photographer to document her findings. Unfortunately, her teammates got tired of her indefatigable spirit and decided to rest in a clearing. But Rachel was still too full of energy to stop, so she took the camera and all she could hold and left her teammates to rest. She had a sandwich and a little water left in her bottle. She didn't need them, or so she thought. When she entered deeper, there was another clearing that stood out in the middle of the thick forest. However, Rachel was so concerned about the plants that she crouched to make observations and take pictures, not looking up. Perhaps if she had paid more attention to her environment, she would have avoided the trouble beforehand. But as the researcher raised her body, there was an animal staring back at her. Its body was hidden in the small bush about six feet away, but there was no confusion that the beast had seen her and was glaring right at her. Rachel froze. In her years of being an amateur botanist, she had never had encounters with bush animals. Fear gripped Rachel as she started regretting leaving her teammates behind. At least if they were there, they would have scared off the animal together. But alone, Rachel was unsure of what to do. Regrets and doubts coursed through her body, numbing her. With her eyes fixated on the hiding animal, she pondered about her next line of action. Definitely, it was not to run away because if she did, then the animal would chase after her and she did not know what it was or how fast it could run. Also, she was sure that no matter how slow it was, the tiredness in her bones would make her more sluggish. Her contemplations failed to bring up a valid and sensible reaction, but luckily for her, the animal did something curious. It stared for a bit longer, then gave a sudden whimper and walked backwards, back into the thickness of the bush. As it moved, Rachel recognized the furry coat of a wolf. It was her first time seeing one and so perhaps why it took so long for her to recognize it at first. The canine soon disappeared, leaving Rachel wondering what it was scared of and why it did not attack. The wolf had definitely seen her and it must have smelled the fear on her that marked her as prey and not predator. She was definitely not threatening enough to send it away. In her disbelief, she turned around to find what frightened the wolf. When Rachel looked behind her, she stumbled down to the ground. An enormous white horse reared behind her, showing off its developed muscles and tall form. It was a wild horse. Rachel knew that the Wyoming woodlands were teeming with them. This particular one was as tall as two men as it stood on its hind legs. The equine then landed on its front hooves with great force. The wind that it displaced touched Rachel, telling her how close the savage horse was to her. She knew that a wild horse was still less dangerous than a wolf, but she also knew that an animal so big and wild could easily crush her beneath its weight, and she was definitely not ready to end her expedition yet. She scrambled to get back up and tried to take off, but the horse was standing in the direction that she came from. That did not matter to Rachel. She found herself sprinting into any opening she could find in the forest. She made sure she was not going the way the wolf disappeared into and definitely not the way the horse came from. But after a few minutes of running, Rachel became dizzy and decided to stop for rest. The horse was nowhere to be found, which was good. But now there was a new problem. She was lost. 
Rachel knew that her legs could not carry her faster than a horse would run, and since the stallion was nowhere near her, it meant that he hadn't followed her. It was a good thing. This gave her time to take out her cell phone and try to reach her teammates. However, there was no connection. The time said that it was already a few minutes to the end of their daily task, and that meant that her team would be looking for her. The thought gave her a sense of hope. All she needed to do was to find out where she had come from and how she could get back there. Though every corner looked the same, Rachel remembered that there was a small clearing in the middle of the forest. If she could locate it, then she would find her team. How long have I been running? How far did I run? She quizzed herself. But there was no time to waste thinking. If she delayed any longer, nightfall would meet her in the forest and nobody could tell what dangerous creature she would encounter then. Rachel had not taken many steps when she saw the horse again. It was the same one. It faced away from her with its head down like it was grazing. Fear gripped her because she knew it meant that the animal had followed her after all. Luckily, it did not seem to know she was there, so she turned in another direction in an attempt to avoid it. But just as she was making her way away from it, her foot hit a stone. She muffled a shout, but it was no use. The wild horse heard her, moved its neck and saw her. Rachel was still gripping her injured foot when it locked her eyes on her. If only I stuck around with my teammates, this would not be happening, she thought. Rachel wondered if its herd was far away or if soon the whole place would be swarming with a family of brute beasts. She knew how dangerous wild horses were from history books. Though the species were herbivores, they were known to have strong meat-snapping teeth and their hoofs delivered punches with the same impact as a bowling ball going at 80 meters per hour. Rachel was evidently shaking, and that was when she knew that her fear response was neither fight nor flight, but freeze. But the horse did not move towards her. It stayed afar, watching her. It trotted to and fro, uneasily, looking into the bush in the general direction of any sound that it heard. Rachel began noticing that it was in defense mode, and not against her, but against any threat in the wilderness, which meant she needed to leave and fast. Whatever the horse was afraid of could certainly not be good for her either. But as she stepped back, a wave of pain rippled through her body. She looked down at her feet, and sure enough, the one she'd hit on the rock was bleeding. This will slow me down, she realized in horror. But since the horse didn't seem interested in running towards her, she took the time to ransack her fanny pack for something to clean the wound. While doing that, the horse kept trotting, and it suddenly found something in the bushes that got Rachel alert. She watched the feral equestrian use its snout to drag out a snake from the green and then stamp unstoppably on the smaller animal. Soon enough, the remainder of the snake was an unrecognizable slush of grayish skin. Rachel was amazed, but as the horse carried the snake away, she proceeded to get her slippers and leave the creature for good. It saw her leaving, and she hoped it would not follow. However, she was out of luck again as the horse started walking right behind her. She was pretty sure it did not see her as a threat. However, she was just as sure it didn't see her as a friend either. As Rachel limped, she continued to search for a signal. The horse trotted towards her, but by now, she was not too afraid of it. She watched it from the side of her eyes while still focusing on the bars of her phone. She cussed a couple of times because the connection bars were still low. Her calls were not getting anywhere. Frustrated now, she checked the time. It was an hour after she last checked. It was getting late, and the sky light was warning her to get out of there fast. Rachel tried another direction to get a network, but she soon noticed that the horse was getting in her way. It blocked her with its side wherever she turned. Move she said, but the horse did not budge. Everywhere she turned, it blocked her way and directed her back to the position she was initially facing. Oh, come on, Rachel whined. Why do you want to trap me here? I'm not here to harm you, trust me. Can we just go our separate ways now? But horses don't hear humans and they definitely don't speak English. The more she tried to move away from it, the more the wild horse came to block her. If she was a zoologist, Rachel would have gotten the cue from the horse's behavior, but she studied plants. She grew up in the city with little to no interaction with animals and no pets. 
Understanding this wonderful wild creature was a huge task for her. No matter what, she knew not to startle the horse nor attack it with a stick or any weapon. However, she didn't know what she should do. She sank to the floor, scared and frustrated. Tears poured from her eyes, but she did not look away from the horse so that she could protect herself from any surprise attack. As she sobbed, the horse trotted through the path behind Rachel and stopped. It was then that she finally realized that it was trying to tell her something. After a while, the horse was still there, waiting for her, looking down at her and up at the way it wanted her to go. Rachel scrambled to her feet and limped towards the animal. It waited for her and soon it started moving again like it was leading her through the forest. Should she follow it? She asked herself. On a normal day, Rachel would not trust the thinking capacity of an animal, but this was no regular day. She was lost in another country. There were wolves in the forest, and this brave creature had already scared away one wolf and killed a snake right in front of her. It was like a fairy tale, but maybe the horse was instinctively protecting her. Or, perhaps, it simply knew the best way to get out of this green maze. Whatever the reason, she decided it might be worth it to trust it. As they trampled their way out of the woodland, Rachel could now get close enough to the horse to rest on it. Putting a hand to its side, she supported her hurt foot on the way out. The horse did not complain. It kept moving, finding their way out together. Gradually, Rachel started to put more and more weight on it. The more they walked, the more painful it was, and the more tired she got. So, the animal slowed down to accommodate her pace. Soon, messages started coming into her phone. When it dinged in her fanny pack, Rachel squealed in delight. The horse halted, staring down at her. He was probably wondering why they stopped, but Rachel gave no explanation. Not that it would have understood her anyway. She dialed a teammate again. Hello? Hello? She panted into the phone. A male voice responded on the other side. Rachel, are you safe? Yes, I am. Okay, stay where you are and keep your phone on. We will come and get you. The police have been looking for you. That alone was enough to calm Rachel down. The horse waited for her to put her phone down before continuing the journey. Excited, she limped to the front of the horse, and just like she had seen them do in the movies, she brushed its neck and mane. She stroked his nose as well, and despite being wild, he allowed her to touch him. The horse let out a loud, high-pitched sound that came from his deep throat. It neighed as she continued stroking it, and Rachel realized he was enjoying the cuddles. It amused her how quickly they became friends. They kept walking together, and soon enough they found a trail. The area around her was not familiar, but Rachel was glad to be on a frequented path again, and she also trusted her new companion. By now, the sun was low, but light still crept through the Wyoming vegetation. Rachel did more of watching her steps than she looked around, trying to tell the area. By her right, the horse allowed her now to put her full weight on him. She would have gotten on it, but Rachel never learned to ride a horse, talk less of one without a saddle and bits. When they reached another clearing, the horse let her rest. The girl was already exhausted from their long trekking, but she could tell that her friends were not far away. While Rachel found a place to sit, the animal kept strolling back and forth at the edge of the tall grasses, just as it did when they saw the snake. The horse was protecting her again. Surprisingly, Rachel's eyes began to droop. She could not believe that she was feeling sleepy in the same woods where wolves ran rampage. Something about her horse protector made her feel comfortable. She sat on some leaves and waited, drifting off from time to time. When she woke up, the horse was still there, but so was the sound of humans approaching them. Rachel forced herself to stand as she called out to them. Her voice was loud enough to call their attention, but low enough not to attract any other wild creature in the forest to her. As she called for help, she noticed the horse moving backwards. He was scared. Come on, I want to introduce you to my friends. They won't harm you. She walked to the horse, sharp pain shooting up her leg. When she got to it, she placed a hand on its snout and began stroking it to calm the animal down. In that position, she felt an unspeakable bond between the two of them. Something not tangible was forming between woman and beast. She called again. This time, the voices were so close, it was only a matter of time before they would see her. Light flashed through the leaves and tree barks. 
Rachel? Yes, it's me. To the man's surprise, Rachel stayed put. Then he pointed his light at the creature that was by her side. The woman had her hands on the head of a massive wild horse and she was stroking it. Was she out of her mind? Rachel turned to say goodbye to her forest companion and left with her teammates who were also looking at her like she'd just grown a second head. The horse watched her, only turning around when it was sure that she was safe. When she was alone with the policeman, he had some questions for her. How did that happen? I don't know what I did, but the horse was just friendly towards me. It protected me and helped me find my way. The police said that they had never seen anything quite like it. A few days later, the tourist and researcher returned to her country, but her story reached some locals who also set out on a similar quest to find this friendly horse. Instead, they found the other equestrians who were the regular savage and wild ones. Many started doubting her words, speculating that she might have been hallucinating or that she'd made up the whole story just for fun. However, the policeman that found Rachel attested to the story, and the tale of the woman and the horse remained a puzzle in the locality. The encounter between Rachel and the wild horse shows us that bonds can be formed in unexpected places and situations. Have you ever been in a similar situation? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.